Hello and welcome. I'm Donna Merkt and I'm the Director of Museum Experience at the Gaylord Pickens Museum, home of the Oklahoma Hall of Fame. And I'm so happy to welcome you here today. The Oklahoma Hall of Fame preserves Oklahoma's unique history while promoting pride in our great state. Through each of its programs and the Gaylord Pickens Museum, the Oklahoma Hall of Fame honors our state's rich tradition by telling Oklahoma's story through its people. We're excited today because we are going to be sharing the story of artist Tammy Brummel and she is one of the artists whose work is featured in uh, the current exhibition. So we have three amazing women artists all from Oklahoma whose art and solo exhibitions are in the Tulsa World Gallery right now and you can see them through April 17th. I encourage you to also join us in person for a meet and greet with the artists from 5 to 7 p.m. on Thursday, April 8th. You can register online at our website, oklahomahof.com, in order to get a timed ticket to be able to come to this event, which will include reduced capacity um, and all participants wearing masks. We also want to give a shout out to our sponsors. The exhibit um, and these exhibit events are supported in part by the Oklahoma Arts Council, which receives support from the state of Oklahoma and the National Endowment for the Arts. Thank you so much to the Oklahoma Arts Council for helping make this exhibit and uh, these events happen. So we're happy to welcome Tammy Brummel today. She is an established Oklahoma-based artist and designer working in fine art and design. Her work has been featured in galleries, public venues, private collections, and retail locations. She has been featured in print publications, videos, and television, including the Oklahoman, Edmund Magazine, Oklahoma Arts and Humanities Magazine, The Gazette, at 1614 Video by Christopher Hunt, is this a great state or what? Fox 25, KSBI, and K4. Tammy's work consists of mixed media collage, abstract painting, and digital collage. The process is organic and spontaneous. The art itself is alive with color and movement using bold brush strokes, texture, and collage. Her pieces in this exhibit were created using acrylic, watercolor, ink, paper, and graphite on canvas. Applying rich, bold brush strokes and color, Tammy creates layers of intertwining stories. Hello, Tammy, and thank you so much for being here today. Hi, thanks for having me. I'll just say a little bit about this is uh, one of my pieces that is in the gallery called Gin and Tonic, uh, mixed media collage. These are my parents. Um, they're both born in Oklahoma. My mom and Freedom, my dad and Binger. Um, they met and uh, military and they traveled a lot. He traveled a lot, brought a lot of things back. They lived in France uh, with my five older siblings. They just brought a lot of things I was really in love with. Uh, silk paintings, French artwork, embroidered silk, um, just lots of things like that, that as a child, I think really uh, just um, amazed me and I got to a lot of watch a lot of slides of their life in France so I, I just always uh, my mom told great stories so I think that's kind of what helped shape me as an artist today. Um, I was born at Fort Sill and when my dad retired we moved to Enid and that's where I went to high school at and then I studied photography and drawing at Oklahoma State University. And then I went on to become a commercial artist and graphic designer in Oklahoma City. And uh, then I started uh, doing digital art and we can go to the next one. Um, I started doing this type of work where um, I would layer photos and textures and all different kinds of elements. Um, this one has a uh, marbled paper uh, included in the layers and um, I would blend those with brushes and filters and uh, uh, kind of create a deconstructive feel to them. Next. Uh, these are two more of those pieces. Um, 
just the uh, the same idea of the layers and removing things and um, and the right one. You, I used uh, some vintage money, um, vintage wallpaper, um, and uh, just use the layering technique and uh, blending to create these. Next. Uh, then with this series, um, I used some of those same techniques and uh, co combined them with vintage images and uh, started creating more collage type things in the traditional sense. Um, I took, I had these printed um, as jucle prints and then I added uh, ink and spray paint and um, paper to these on top of the prints. And um, I was really inspired by 20th century artwork for this whole series. Um, some of my favorites are Hannah Hawk, uh, who said, Jesus, Philippe Consalvos, and Romero Bearden. Um, this uh, period is just really interesting, fascinating period to me, where there was uh, a lot of body political and social satire. Next. Uh, these are two more of those pieces that are in that series. Um, the sand and the moon on the left and chemical illusion on the right. Uh, next. Um, then I transitioned into mixed media works. Um, I wanted to take a break from digital work and began making mixed media paintings and collage. Um, and again, sort of my method is organic, spontaneous. Um, this piece was made for an exhibition uh, called Altered Barbie, and it was a benefit for Women Lead Oklahoma. Next. And these are a couple of paintings that um, I was making at that same time. Um, acrylic and ink and graphite on canvas, which um, yeah, again, just very organic and spontaneous and just building um, till I get to that final outcome. Uh, next, uh, some more, this is more mixed media collage that I had began. Uh, the left is a, an acrylic paint, paper and graphite on wood. And then the two below are mixed media collage on paper with some of the same elements. They have some watercolor. Uh, next. And these were also paintings, uh, more of a study in movement and gesture and relationship of color and mediums. Um, and uh, very colorful and uh, these are fun to make. Uh, next, uh, this is me at work in my studio and uh, starting this latest series open to interpretation. I heavily layered paper and acrylic paint to create a textured deconstructed effect uh, I use paper from magazines and all envelopes and also uh, vintage coloring books. Next. Uh, some more of the process. Um, I kind of, uh, I start on several pieces at one time and just start laying things out and thinking about color and gathering pieces of paper that I like, catch my eye and um, just kind of just start throwing things together. Next. Um, this is um, a finished piece on the right and two photos of 
the process. Um, you can see, you can see what I take out basically and the small areas I leave behind. Um, it's just that process of layering and taking away until I get to where I feel like it's a final piece. And um, I've talked here about uh, some of the artists who have inspired me. Um, I, uh, I try to study a lot of different types of uh, painters, collage artists, mixed media artists, and um, just really get inspired by a lot of people. And um, we can go to the next. Here is another piece, the final piece on the right. The beginning of layering the paint and paper. Not quite sure where I wanna go with it in the beginning. Just adding things that I like in colors and um, experimenting with the color combinations. And then the final piece here on the right. And next. Again, the final piece on the right, and some of the pieces on the left that were the beginning of it. Um, yeah, sometimes they are very, not very recognizable, the, some of the images, but I like the effect of the paper being painted over, creating that texture and um, just adding depth to it. And next, another one. You can see just the same technique coming through. And next, if there's, I think we're close to the end. Yeah, here's another one where um, you can see the one on the right, the final piece, uh, some of the things coming out and the layers created and the vintage wall, the vintage, excuse me, vintage coloring book. I really enjoyed using that. Um, I just felt like that really added uh, an interesting bit to it. Um. So I, I'm kind of curious, it seems like you really enjoy utilizing a lot of vintage materials in your work and, and have since you were even working earlier in Photoshop and doing some of your graphic work. What's the draw there for you? Um, I, I, well, that's a good question. I don't know. I mean, I, I think um, those errors and um, decades of those I just think they're just really interesting. And that look I like. And I did, you know, with the later stuff, I did go to a more, using more modern magazines and that type of stuff. And, but I did come in with the, <laughs> the coloring book. I just came across that unpacking things after moving. And I thought, you know, I just, that could be useful. <laughs> and so, uh, I used it in this, the latter with the uh, modern, also the modern um, magazine type cuttings. So it seems like your pieces go through kind of s several layers of, of interpretation and, and, and working before you kind of get it to its final, final solution. Like, can you tell us about that process a little bit? Like, do you do you do a little bit and then let it sit for a while, or you know yeah. how how is it that kind of what informs you in moving forward? And because you some of those you've completely covered up things that you started with, right? So I just right like to you right. Um, it is it's just about layering, and like that is true. I'll do something, and um, like I said, I'll work on several pieces. And um, I have to leave it, I have to go away. And I think that helps to work on more than one piece at one time to go to something else and then come back. Because I find that you think you're falling in love with something at one minute and then you come back and not so much. <laughs> and so that's just part of that whole process of, 
all right, I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, go a different direction. And uh, eventually it gets there, you know, but yeah, the, all the layering and the kind of that deconstructed feel. I like that. And um, that's what they represent pretty much. So can you um, tell me how did starting in the digital world kind of inform what you do now with um, tangible pigments and, and materials? Right. It's, well, it's, it's basically that same thought process um, as far as digital. And it's just taking that and doing it with your hands instead. But um, it's basically a lot of the same things. You know, the way you think about it and you take away and you add and layer. And so it was pretty, you know, it's pretty natural to go from one to the other. Do you still work digitally now? Do you ever take the pieces you've created now and scan them into Photoshop and play with them um, as a base for any digital work? I do, I do. I actually, uh, I have some prints where I've done that. I've taken those pieces and uh, layered them with uh, some more color and played around like that. I have done that. But is it the um, is it the collage work now that that captures you most of the time? Then yes, yeah, right now. Well, I I think that um, you know you've had a, a pretty long career as an artist and you've kind of transitioned through some different mediums and things. What advice might you give to emerging artists who are just starting out about pursuing um, their creative passions? Uh, my advice would be to try it all. Try everything that you have an opportunity to try art-wise, whether it's digital, um, you know, just all the different art forms, uh, sculpture, all those. If you can, you know, have the opportunity to try everything, you'll find your niche and find what you love to do. Well, that's great advice. Um, so I'm curious, where what are you planning on now? What are you working on now? Um, now I am starting some more pieces on paper. Uh, I like to use um, I use watercolor and ink. I like ink uh, and easy flow acrylics. So I'm kind of uh, starting some works on paper. I think I'm going back to, I showed a few pieces that were on paper that were um, the uh, gesture studies and the color studies. And I really like doing that. And um, so I kind of put that on hold for a while. So I think I'm going back to, to do some of those and work in that area. So is that with that kind of strong black line that we see in some of your work? Yes, in some of the old colors and... Okay, yeah, because there seems to be gesture. an interesting contrast between your brush work, which oftentimes is very um, organic in nature, and then sometimes the shapes that you're utilizing, which can sometimes be more geometric or have references to, um, you know, less curvilinear uh, shapes or situations so um. right I actually kind of go uh, back and forth between those two things um, sometimes struggling a little bit like uh, as far as what 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 type of brush stroke and should I use and should I stick to a more I don't know um, that rougher <laughs> I would say look as to pose, you know, beautiful swirly lines <laughs> and that type of thing and the gesturing, yeah. So we have a question in our chat. It says, uh, how have your experiences as an Oklahoman impacted your career as an artist? Oh, well, uh, that's a good question. I would say just as far as, um, yeah, I've lived here my whole life and uh, 
went to school here to become a graphic designer. So that was huge. That was big in the beginning of my art career. And then, um, and being able to join um, groups like uh, Oklahoma Visual Artists Coalition and being able to uh, get involved with people that were in the artist community and all of our, you know, we've had a really great growing artist community here. Mm -hmm. And uh, just being able to be a part of all that um, it is what I feel like has contributed. So it sounds like you found good support system in Oklahoma for artists, right. other creatives, and then OVAC and, and some things like that. That's great. Exactly. Okay. Um, I, and I have another question. Did you always want to be an artist from a young age, from since you were a child? Yeah, I mean, I think so. I maybe didn't exactly know it, but I did. Um, I, you know, I can remember making doll, building complete doll houses out of cardboard boxes and making all the furniture, furnishings, you know, cutting and all that. And um, then also I had an older brother who was a, a terrific interior designer and artist. And uh, so he really uh, influenced me a lot, I think. And my mother, my mother always was a photographer and we sewed together. So we were always making things and we we're always listening to music. And so, um, yeah, that was all from an early age. So creativity has just been part of who you are. Yeah. All right. And then we have another question. What inspires you most when you begin a new collection or series? Oh, let me think what it's something usually that um, I think I see, you know, just um, and uh, I don't know, you know, because I, I kind of go from one thing to the other and uh, a mood will strike me as to what direction I want to go. And I'm not quite sure where that comes from all the time, but um, uh yeah, I think uh, studying other artists is big. I think I love looking at art. I love looking at other people's art and it's all inspiring. Well, you definitely gave us several names of artists that um, have inspired you uh, in the past and that, that you've been watching. I'm curious if there's any Oklahoma artists that have been capturing your, your attention right now. Oh yeah, there's always Oklahoma artists. You know, uh, Christy Owens, Skip Hill. Um, I could just go on and on. <laughs> well, I, I love that you are so inspired and um, supported here in the Oklahoma art scene. Um, so we have another question. Uh, do you ever collaborate with other artists, Oklahomans or those outside of the state? I have, I have, I have. Um, collaborated with Michael Kirby. Um, we did um, some a digital series together where we would pass things back and forth. And um, I would like, I'd like to tell people that collaboration is really uh, important, I think. It is, um, it can really change your, the way you look at something and um, inspire you to do other things. Uh, so I really, really liked co collaboration. I think it's, it's really a good thing. So there has been new interest recently in the buying and selling of digital art. And I'm just kind of wondering as a, as a digital artist yourself, you know, how do you feel about seeing that as a growing, um, you know, funded and supported movement? I know. I, I, it's kind of strange, <laughs> really. Um, my dog brought that to my attention the other day. And I was like, ah, you know, because sometimes I'm older. Technology can be a little overwhelming sometimes. Um, but it's really, it is really cool. It, it's, um, 
it's pretty crazy. <laughs> the things I've seen on it. Um, yeah, so um, for our audience, new technology has made it possible for there to be authenticated ownership of digital artworks, which has been right. a struggle up until this point. So there's been um, a surge in investment in digital art that is rivaling that of, of actual art, so that the uh, of physical art. So that's kind of an interesting uh, situation. So. Um, well, Tammy, we have just had the best time having you here today and learning more about your artworks. And I, I definitely want to go ahead and remind everyone that Tammy's work is uh, up in the Gaylord Pickens Museum in the Tulsa World Lorton Family Gallery through April 17th. The museum is open Tuesday through Saturday, um, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Tuesday through Friday and 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Saturday or by appointment. And we're happy to welcome uh, tour groups as well by appointment. So please give us a shout. Um, our website, I'm putting it in the chat right now. Um, visit us there. And while you're there, you also have the opportunity to visit Tammy's virtual exhibit if you're not quite ready uh, to be in person yet. So please go ahead and check that out. Tammy, before we go, is there any last thing you'd like to share with our audience? Ah, just thanks for having me. And um, I hope you all can get out and look at some art and be That's safe. That's right. We want everybody to stay safe and stay inspired. So go ahead and, and visit art in the way that you feel safe doing so. And uh, please follow us on social media to learn more about Tammy and the art exhibits. And if you can join us on April 8th to meet the artists and see the artwork. We appreciate all of you being here from the Oklahoma Hall of Fame and Gaylord Pickens Museum. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.